Hi, I'm James from Sonic Couture and uh, I'm going to be taking a look at our new Pandrums 2 instrument. I say new, um, many of you will of course know that it's not entirely new, uh, far from it, because we've had a version of this instrument on the market since I think 2008. Um, we have tweaked it and uh, added to it in that time, but we thought it was time for a completely new um, version 2 instrument and so here it is. Um, we've tried to not mess with the formula too much. We've retained all the features that you like, um, but we have added two new drums. So previously there were five drum sets in here. Um, we now have seven, we've added two more. This is one of them here, it's the Meridian, um, Meridian Amara, and we've added a Rav Vast tongue drum, which is very cool. very different sound um, to that drum. This is the drum list. Uh, we've got the original Hang Mark 1, the drum that started it all. I'm just going to turn off our jammer there. We'll talk about that in a minute, but we've got sort of... That's that incredibly iconic sound right away. We've got Hang Mark 2. Halo drums. Uh, these were drums that were added in the intervening years between uh, now and then, uh, then and now, I should say. This halo is in B. Kind of have a deeper, more mellow sound than the hangs. Um, they are made by uh, Pantheon Steel in the States. Uh, We have a pair of Rock Creek tongue drums. These are quite a different little instrument. Um, they're not the same kind of uh, technique, manufacturing technique as, as the hangs, but these add a much more kind of brittle harmonic tone. And then, as I say, onto our new uh, drums, the Meridian. This is produced in the UK, in Bristol, and it's a beautiful, beautifully made, really, really pure sound to it. Um, and the Rav. And again, this is, the Rav is cut, is a tongue drum, as you'll see, it's got these uh, notches cut here, um, rather than the round tone field you find on the um, hang type uh, hand pans. So this has got, in a sense, it's got more in common with the Rock Creeks. Uh, I guess it's halfway between the two, which is why we, we thought it was particularly interesting. Um, it rings for a long time. So if we take a look at the instrument, I'm gonna load up the Meridian to do this because that's that's my new favorite. You'll see down the right hand side, we've got different articulations. Now, these do vary. The articulations we've recorded vary from drum to drum, um, partly because we've kind of uh, honed down the craft of sample, sampling hand pans over the years. And the first two that we sampled were the hangs. Um, we took a whole load of different um, a whole load of different articulations, uh, such as knuckle, you know, which is, is not something that a hang player would often do, but in 2008 when they were new, we kind of thought that might be a cool thing to do. Corners, slap, the edge. Edge refers to, in our parlance, it refers to the edge of this tone field, the center being indented piece in the middle. So yes, they all have, these two have the same, again, slightly different set for the halos. We did some mallets on the halos. Um, the rock creeks are, are only played with mallets. 
so you don't have an articulation there. Uh, onto the Meridian. The Meridian, we wanted a very pure but very detailed set. So there's an enormous amount of velocity layers, up to 60 velocity layers in this set. Um, but, and we've just stuck to the basics here, which are center and edge. Um, the center played with the fingertips and a much more pure sound. And then the edge of the tone field, which often played with kind of the flat of the thumb. And then some corners, which are these spaces here around the top of the drum, and you get a kind of mixed uh, harmonic version of the notes. The bottom here we have, um, which uh, you know previous users will recognise, we have some hand noise. If you want to uh, record, and emulate a really realistic performance, you might want to be able to hear the uh, player's hands, which will occasionally scuff and scrape around the drum. So if I crank this up to a kind of unnatural level, and you have to turn up the, the chance of it occurring. So we set this to 100% and zero dB. I'm gonna turn on the jammer here, which just allows me to have an easy little performance in the background. There you hear the hand noise. You then just turn that down to a kind of just to a very subtle, realistic level. And of course it wouldn't happen all the time, so you reduce the chance. Okay, uh, other things about performance um, that I want to show you, new features that we've added in our options tab. Uh, you have a whole load of stuff here, um, controlling your velocity curve. Really quiet to Adjust the timing. Some timing randomization. You can randomize the velocity. Pan. You can transpose the whole drum here. If you want it in a C, a B. It's very easy to do. Just going to reset that. Um, and this is uh, this is what I particularly like. This is random articulation. So, um, as I say, this is our articulation list. Um, that will just play in the selected one, but if you select this to one, it'll move along the list. So you get quite a natural mix of, uh, of center and edge playing uh, as a player would do if you set that up to, th to two further along the list, so in some one of the uh, hangs. You see that will take advantage of the uh, of the full list there. Okay now as I say I'm using the jammer to play this and this is um, a generative arpeggiator which we've included on um, a huge number of our instruments over the years and it's it's really evolved a lot but where I think the where it really comes into its own is with this instrument it really works in the most kind of fun and natural way with this instrument um, so I'm just holding down a chord here um, and we've got the jammer set to evolve you can set it to loop and it'll behave like a normal arpeggiator uh, you could you can set the number of uh, steps to the loop and you can set the scale here, so um, you can choose any any scale you want, and it will restrict it to the scale, meaning that the the notes as they generate will will stay in key. You can, you could override this and set it to chromatic, but then the uh, the generator is going to hit some wrong notes. So I'm going to stick with D, which the drum is in, and you need to switch this to evolve. Again, you have a bunch of randomization controls here have it flip octaves around. This controls the amount of randomization on the note. You can introduce gaps to the performance. And again, you can randomize the timing. 
small values are always going to be best. You can uh, introduce more or less velocity randomization up here. Swing. You can set the density of the pattern. Note length. And the mode. This is set to random. You can play double notes. And you can latch it if you want to go hands free something. Okay, this wheel at the top is a set of presets, so you can come up with a completely different set of presets for each one of these 12 notches. And so when they're loaded in the wheel, you can then easily assign a MIDI controller. I'm just going to reach here for a knob, so you can then Jam along. If you so desire. Okay. The second generative tool we have here is Weaver, which is um, something we've developed more recently. Um, and it's akin to a delay, except it works per note. I think that's the simplest way of describing it. If I just show you briefly, um, you can see we have these different lanes. And if I play a note, the first note will hit these step notes here that we've designed. And if you play a second one uh, alongside that, it will hit the second lane and so on. So here we go. presets to try, um, as with all our stuff. So it sets up these kind of rhythmic effects. You have a decay control here, which uh, currently patterns like this are set to infinite. But if you were to bring that right down, you'd get a kind of gently decaying. Like a delay effect, as I say. Uh, let's come back to the main instrument for a second here. I'm going to put the jammer back on. So I went through the options. Uh, you also have options to turn off the animations here, uh, the note animations or round robins on or off. Microtuning. This is always interesting. You uh, you have to activate this to get it to work. You'll immediately hear that change. You have a set of presets here, uh, all sorts of exotic type of tunings. You can have uh, Balinese tunings. Gamelan tunings. Indian tunings. Very interesting. Or you can, uh, you can entirely make up your own presets. If you look at the bottom here, you'll notice that this uh, note changes with whichever note you play. You can then just retune. And if you have all octaves selected, then every D on the range will get tuned to the same. Um, you can completely change the note as well if you want to, uh, or initialize. You type in here, uh, and you can just save your own preset. 
by going to export tuning. There we are. Okay. So if you're into microtuning, it's a really powerful tool to play with. And apart from that, we have kept the instrument fairly simple. We just have uh, some simple ADSR controls. This is, you've got another velocity control here. Set your velocity to volume. Attack. And filters. You can choose a whole bunch of filters from here. Band pass. set that back to a normal low pass and um, another new feature we've added here which is um, a really useful one slim is kind of like a custom filter we've got we've um, designed which reduces the main fundamental of each note so in fact, there's a very full rich fundamental just uh, slim it out a bit. So it's sort of like a very, very focused high pass that you don't, you don't, you're not carving away all of the low end. You're just carving out the big lump of the note, so you can get quite a, uh, a more refined, detailed sound if you want to. It's a few dBs makes a good difference. I really. Um, that's really all there is to the uh, to the main instrument. Um, it is nice and simple. This is our traditional um, FX page, which uh, you'll find on many of our products. You have three inserts up here, and you can choose from a selection of a lot of very cool NI effects. Things like faces and uh, replica delay are brilliant. tape modes etc they're all really great compressors uh, a simple uh, solid bus EQ here which is very useful you've got a gain control here uh, which is quite a useful control to um, do a bit of gain staging and boost the uh, level of the instrument Then our custom space processor. Um, this is a lot of fun. These are all custom impulse responses that we've made or collected over the years. You've got some from that we made in All Saints Church in London. Pan drum sounds really great with a nice reverb. Um, you've got scoring stages. Just scroll through. And you've got samples of gear like plates. And then some more experimental. You can reverse these too. And then just finally we have stereo width and saturation. Okay, I think that's a nice little overview of the uh, of the new instrument. Um, I hope you get a chance to try it.